Hello, we are on the Real Programming Channel. My name is Andre. This is our 27th lesson. I greet you. We will talk about uh, sizing up your images. And let's start. Let's go. There's one last attribute of the image element you should know about actually. There are pair of attributes, wide and height. There are no dumb questions. Why would I ever use these attributes of the browser? Just figure it out anyway. On many browsers, if you supply the weight and height in your HTML, then the browser can get a head start laying out the page before displaying it. If you don't, the browser often has uh, readjusted the page yet uh, after it knows the size on, uh, of an image. Remember, the browser downloads uh, image after it downloads uh, the HTML file and begins to display the page. The browsers can't know the size of the images before it downloads them unless you tell it. You can also supply weight and height values that are larger or smaller than the size of the image and the browsers will scale the image. To fit those dimensions, uh, many people do uh, this when they need to display an existing image at uh, a size that is larger or smaller than its original dimensions. As uh, you see later, however, there are many reasons uh, not to use white and height for this purpose. Do I have to use these attributes in pairs? Can I just specify or a white for or a height? You can but uh, if you're going to do to go to the treble to tell the browsers one dimension. Supply the second dimension is about the same amount of work and there isn't a lot to be generated by supplying just the weight or a height unless you're scaling the image to a particular weight or height. We have said many times that we are supposed to use HTML for structure and not for presentation. There's feel like presentation attributes, am I wrong? It depends on how you are using these attributes. If you're setting the image, weight and height to the correct dimensions, then it is really just informational. However, if you are using the weight and height to resize the image in the browser, then you are using these attributes for representation. presentation. In that case, it's probably better to consider using CSS to achieve the same result. Creating the ultimate fun site, my pod. iPhones are fine too. iPod owners lower their iPods and they take them everywhere, imagine creating a new site called my pod to display picture of your fans and their iPods from their uh, favorite locations all around the world. What do you need to get started? Just some knowledge of HTML, some images and the law for your iPod. We've already written some of the HTML for this site, but we haven't added the images uh, yet. That's uh, where you come in. Before, uh, but before you get to the images, let's get uh, things set up. Look uh, for the chapter 5 folder in the same source for the book. There find a folder named my pod, open the my pod folder and here's what you'll uh, see inside. My pod in settle. You can see uh, the space needle. You can use uh, see the uh, 628 coffee shops. You'll find this in the chapter 5 folder. Uh, we already written some of the HTML for the my pod site. You'll find it in the index.html file. Here is the first pod image, uh, an image of the Seattle. We are going to use the photos folder to hold the images for the site. Note, you'll find a couple of other folders in my pod too, but ignore those for now. Check out my pod's index.html file. Open up the file index.html and you'll see work has already begun on my iPod. Here's the use the HTML so far. Look on some of my text. This code. We're there in some Revy baked SS uh, here. Just type this in for now. All it does is give uh, the page a light green background. We'll be getting to CSS in a few chapters, promise. This HTML should look familiar as we are using the basic building blocks h1, h2, and p. And uh, here 
how it looks in the browser. Not bad, but we need uh, images. And exercise. As you can see, a lot of the HTML is already written to get my port up and running. All you need to do is add a, an image element for each photo you want to include. There is uh, one photo so far set on video check. So go ahead and add an element to place uh, that image in the page below. When you finish it, load the page in your browser and check out the view of Seattle. This is where you need to place uh, the first photo. Your image element is uh, going to go right here. And whoa, the image is way too large. Watch it. If the image fits nicely in your browser window, then your browsers may have an auto image results. Option turned on. More on this in just a sec. Well, the image is right there where it should be, but that is one large image. Then the image, most of the images that come from digital cameras these days are that large or larger. Should we just leave the image like it is and uh, let visitors uh, use the scroll bar. You are going to see there are a couple of reasons why that's a bad idea. Let's take a look at the image and the browser and see just how uh, bad this situation is. Here's our browser to do about the size of the typical browser window. And here's the Citadel pack image you added to index.html. Here's the full size of the image which is bigger than the size of the browser window and much bigger. We could use the scroll bars to see the rest of the image, but wouldn't it be better if you could fit this image into the browser's window? The browser's window is about 800 pixels wide. The image is 1200 pixels wide. This would, this. There are not dumb questions. What's wrong with having the user just use the scroll bar to see the image? In general, web pages with large image are hard to use. Not only can your visitors not see the entire image at once, but also using scroll bars is cumbersome. Largest uh, images also require more data to be transferred between the server and your browsers, which takes a lot of time and may result in your page being very slow to display, particularly for users uh, on deal app or other slow connections. Why can't uh, just use the weight and height attributes to resize the image on the page? Because the browser still has to retrieve the entire large image before it scales it down to fit your page. You said the browser's window is 800 pixel wide. What exactly does it mean? Your computer display is made up uh, of millions of dots called pixels. If you look very closely at your display, you'll see them. This. And while screen size and resolutions tend to vary, uh, some people have small monitors, some large. Most people typically um, set their browsers to somewhere between 800 and uh, 1280 pixels wide. So around 800 pixels is a good rule of uh, thumb uh, for the maximum wide of your image and your web pages too, but we'll get to that in a later chapter. How do the number of pixels relate to the size of the image on the screen? A good rule of uh, thumb is uh, uh, 96 pixels to every inch. Also with today's high resolution monitors and uh, retinal displays. It can go higher. We used to use a standard of 72 pixels per inch PPI. But to handle modern displays, the concept of the CSS uh, pixel has been created. The CSS pixel is uh, one of 96 of an inch 96 ppi. So far, a uh, free wide uh, multiply tree, free height image, you would uh, use uh, 96 pixels. Multiply three inches is equal uh, 288 uh, multiply. 288 pixels. Well, how large should I make my image then? In general, you want to keep the weight of your image still less than 
800 pixels wide. Of course, you may want your images to be uh, significantly smaller or somewhat larger, depending of, uh, on what you're using the image for. What is if the image is logo for your page? You probably want that small but still readable. After all, you don't need a logo with the white of enter web page. Logos land to run between 100 and 200 pixels wide. So uh, ultimately, uh, the answers to your questions depend on their design of your page. For photos which uh, you usually do want uh, to view as large as possible, you may want to have a page of small thumbnail images that load quickly and then allow the user to click on each thumbnail to use a larger version of the image. We'll get to all that shortly. I think my browser automatically resized the image of Seattle because uh, it fits uh, perfectly in the window. Why did my browsers do this? Some browsers have a feature that resizes uh, any image that doesn't fit uh, within and uh, the width uh, of your browser. But many browsers don't do this so you don't want to rely on it even if every browser did have this feature. You'd still be transferring a lot more data than necessary between the server and browser which would make your page slow to load and less usable. And keep in mind that an increasing number of people are viewing web pages on mobile devices and large uh, images will impact data usage on these devices. And um, resize the image to fit in the browser. We'll talk about this in the next lesson. And this uh, concludes our 27th lesson. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, please. Put likes, share with friends, comment. Eat bananas, chocolate, and not drink more water for the effective work of our bands. Bye.